Welcome to this week's episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us today is Tom Webster, Adam Hello, Jordan. Everyone. Hey. Nice, nice job there, Tom. And then myself, Eric Fine. How are you guys doing today? We're doing pretty we are good. Doing, yeah, just fine. Just I fine. speak for A both of us. Here. I was going to say, you're all talkative right now. Well, we've got some <laughs> nice stuff lined up with for you this week, but let's start with the norm. Hey, Tom, what you've been playing? Honestly, nothing. I have played absolutely nothing this week, and it's killing me. Uh, I have been busy with a bunch of work stuff, a bunch of project stuff, uh, but I have been... Uh, brushing up on a little bit of game dev here and there. Um, I've been listening to a lot of gaming podcasts, but I haven't had time to play literally anything except a brief bit of Star Trek, the 25th anniversary edition DOS game uh, that I was streaming just 30 minutes ago. It's the first thing I've played this this week. (laughs) Well, if you're going to play anything, you might as well play DOS, right? I mean, well, I, I tried to play Pokemon Go, and I'm sure I'll get into a rant later in the show about this, but... I use a custom ROM because I like custom ROMs, and Niantic decided to stop that. Are you so a spoofer? I'm, I'm not. I don't do anything except play the damn game. And the only reason I play the damn game <laughs> is because during during my lunch hour, I like to walk around the city. It's a, it's a lot of fun because I'm not just walking to walk and evade the homeless people. I'm walking and I'm catching Magikarp. It's great. <laughs> You'd um, rather deal with Magikarp than homeless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who wouldn't? At least, at least they pay off eventually, right? Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I have uninstalled Pokemon Go, and I am now contributing to Niantic's hemorrhage of active users. There you yeah. go. We'll probably get at that at some point. But you, um, you didn't play any games, but you did buy some. Oh, from yes. What, from what we understand. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, uh, I, <laughs> we will, I think that's in our show role for tonight. Um, it's not. I don't think I get in the show roll. I just spent eighty bucks on uh, on GOG dot com, and you I spent bought a lot 80? of stuff. Holy shit! Eighty. Yeah. <laughs> well, before Tom goes on his uh, talk of how his wallet <laughs> hammered shitty dollars on GOG, known for selling two dollar or less games, Adam, what have you been playing? <laughs> well, uh, guess <laughs> Rocket League. I've been playing nothing but Rocket League the past week, as normal. I meant to play something else, but I have not yet done so. But uh, I have a couple of games queued up. I've, I've got a couple of things I'd like to start playing again. Uh, things I never got around to. The uh, Talos Principle um, DLC I bought a while back. I never did really play it. Uh, first game was great, so I'm sure the DLC is pretty good. I'm and notorious for see. having access to DLC and never playing it. I currently yeah. have DLC for The Last of Us sitting on a PS3 back in Ohio that I will probably right. never end up playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and uh, Enter the Gungeon. I bought that a while back and played like 30 minutes. And it was really good. I just never really kept getting into it. That looks so good. I really plan on picking that up it's the next game. Yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. That's that's one thing that I really, really wanted to get into, but I was I never just bit the bullet and bought it. <laughs> I see what and you're ni- doing. Ni- nicely done. <laughs> and we have oh. lost all of our followers. Twitch has banned Perfect. us. Yes. And YouTube is closing all of my accounts. <laughs> About time. But, <laughs> yeah, and then I've just been doing a lot of Rocket League, much like you. Um, Factorio still has its hooks into me. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a automation game. You are stranded on a planet, and you have to eventually build a rocket to get out. Um, You extract resources, and then you build things to extract those resources for you that then get sent to machines that you build to build other things for you. And you slowly automate this process of things that build things that build things that move stuff that gets stuff. It's If you like Roller Coaster Tycoon, SimCity kind of control, but you just feel it lacking and you want more control over shit it's good for you if that's daunting for you you would hate it and then um i got about halfway through gears of war 4 and it is really really fucking good halfway through what gears of war 4 oh yeah so good um i have not done any of the multiplayer but um the campaign 
the stories really well. They started off really nice. They do a uh, nice recap for the first few so you know what's going on if you're not familiar with the Gears universe. Um, and actually something I was I really liked was the fact that um, there's a horde mode, which it's known for in its multiplayer. Is actually, there's chunks of that put into the campaign now. So even oh, if you don't like really? playing with others, you can still get that horde mode in the campaign. It's, it was really well done. Um, I'm probably actually going to finish it tomorrow. I plan on actually streaming it on the Twitch 472. But that's pretty much been my go. Um, speaking of which, that's also one of the newer games that's released. And one of the others alongside of it right now is um, Titanfall. That game... Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2, thank you. Made by the people who originally brought you Modern Warfare. Um, it is very fluid from all accounts. I'm actually probably going to be buying it next week, but it actually has a campaign this time. Yay. That's fantastic. That I was one that's... of my big beefs with the original game. Right. It was, you know, the, the campaign, if you can call it that, was just a couple of training missions to get you prepped for multiplayer. And yeah. I'm not paying 60 bucks for that game. Right. At 30 bucks, that would have been fine. Yeah. I'm sure. But I've heard it's very well polished, plays very well. It's actually cross-platform this time because the contract with EA and um, Microsoft isn't there for this one. But it's getting low adoption numbers right now because EA not only released this, but the week prior, they released Battlefield 1. And yeah, what that is would a, do it. What's a better marketing strategy than releasing two AAA titles that compete for the same market one week after the other? <laughs> hey... Uh, someone give that person a raise. Yes. Well, he'll need one uh, because he probably doesn't have a job right now. <laughs> yeah. Battlefield 1 looked really good, though. I really like what I've seen of that so far. The, 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 the whole... I don't know. They're getting away from the modern, regular military stuff. It's cool to bring it back a little ways. And are not just gonna, to World War II. <laughs> are we going to see... I was, I was about to say, are we going to see another influx of World War II games for a decade? Uh, Medal of Honor. World War it's games. about time they cycle back through to them. It is. <laughs> it's kind of an endless cycle, isn't it? You know, I, I have not been interested in a Battlefield game since Battlefield 1942 back <laughs> in the day. But Battlefield 1 is seriously tempting me. Yeah, and I, I don't get into COD or Battlefield or, or you know, the big name FPS games. Because yeah. I, I just don't care that much. But and it, it looks tempting. It looks pretty. Battlefield um, 1 had a really interesting uh, campaign situation I was, I've was, i been hearing about where when you die, it kind of takes you out to a bird's eye and gives you like person's name, date of death, and then takes you to another person oh. to try to give you that feel of this motherfucker Ow. just died. <laughs> He's done. Yeah, that's cool. That's amazing. Because I mean, that, I... that war was bloody. That was a yeah, nasty yeah. war. Well, I mean, they are called world wars for a reason. Well, I mean, this one, there was, hey, you got your trench over there. We got our trench over here. We're going to run at you in the open field. Just getting mowed the fuck down. Yeah. Oh, and then when you're settled in, we're just going to put mustard gas in you and have you cough your lungs up. Yeah, fuck that war. Yeah, it's all kinds of fucked up. But in actual really, really, really current news... Um, today was BlitzCon from our uh, favorite developer who produces everything themselves, Blizzard. And, um, there's some interesting facts that came out of that. Like, you know, they're going to redo Diablo with Diablo three, that they're opening up, um, AI for Starcraft two to actual like data engineers who are going to be able to apply machine learning algorithms to AI for the record. There's going to be some insane AI coming up. I cannot wait. <laughs> but the biggest news, I think, is hands down the Overwatch Pro League. That yes. shit is this, insane. This changes exciting. everything. Would you okay. like to uh, go on about that, Tom? Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> All right. So, so let's break this down. Here's how esports currently work. There are two schools of thoughts by the two big players in esports. We're talking um, Riot and valve so what riot does uh is they own league of legends which is you know if not 
one of the if not the biggest then one of the biggest multiplayer games uh of all time uh and then you know there's the powerhouse valve which of course is famous for uh, uh steam and not releasing half-life 3 those two things alone um so riot decides um for their esports, okay, we're going to manage the tournaments, we're going to manage the players, we're going to manage all of this. Um, you guys can compete and you know try to win, try to get on the ground floor, make an impact, but we're really going to control everything ourselves. We're going to keep it all in house, um, and it's it's still in the realm of video game tournament. It isn't you know giant and professional. I mean, esports are big. Esports are making tons of money. It's one of the fastest growing sections in entertainment right now. But, uh, you know, Riot clearly exists on the side of, you know, video games being played for money, not necessarily sports. Um, Valve sits kind of next to Riot, except they've taken the laissez-faire approach, the free market approach, saying, well, if you want to put on a tournament, go ahead. You can have your own prize pools. Uh, we don't really lock down teams, what they do, what they say. We locked down our own casters, our own production, and we put on tournaments. Uh, but if you guys want to go out and mess with the teams and, you know, after the international and, you know, two weeks before a major tournament, shift everyone around and confuse all your all your fan base, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Go ahead and do it. Valve doesn't have any interest in trying to micromanage players or teams. Uh, but Blizzard just announced possibly the closest thing to real life sports i've ever seen um the overwatch pro league will have each city will get an overwatch team and there will it'll be north america uh, korea china uh southeast asia uh there's there's a bunch of places being being uh thrown in just at the start i'm sure it'll get bigger as it goes on um so now you've got you know the San Francisco, whatever, Overwatch team. Um, you can go to, you know, one of the gaming arenas and watch two teams compete in a LAN to, you know, battle it out throughout the season. And then at the end of the season, there's a giant championship with all the best teams. But here's the biggest part. Here's the thing that, you know, it's important, but it's a very understated in gaming news sites right now. Contracts. Uh, Blizzard is going to make sure that... Um, Players will have, you know, compensation benefits. You're not just going to be thrown onto a team and say, hey, if you win, you'll get like 6% of the prize money. Uh, the company gets 30% and we may or may not keep you on next year. Good luck. Because uh, that's how it works in Dota 2 right now. Uh, that's how it works in most esports right now. As you pay, you, you get a chunk of your winnings and hope you have a job next year. This will really mean that esports, at least the Overwatch Pro League, will be stable. Uh, it'll be a thing that you can rely on. It won't have a bunch of, uh, you know, the post TI shuffle, uh, as uh, Reddit uh, on Dota 2 calls it. Um, I cannot wait. This is going to be amazing. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Overwatch. I don't even play Overwatch. I like to watch it occasionally, but this will really get me into it. I, I might, yeah. I might actually buy Overwatch to, you know, <laughs> try it out. If not just because this is so impressive i don't think this is a right move for everyone to copy but it is definitely one of the i, I think this will take esports to the to the big leagues i think this is really what pushes it over the edge valve got it to where it is today i think blizzard is going to take it all the way from there right and, that, and that's important that they're spending the money to start the scene in a very legitimate way paying the teams making sure that they have, you know, a team for each city, competition. It's going to get more people into Overwatch that might not. If, like me, I've never played Overwatch at all, but I will check it out. And another... And, and this... Go I was, ahead. I was saying, another interesting fact is they're taking a very um, NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL yeah. stylistic approach where, like, Overwatch is saying... or Blizzard saying we're setting up this infrastructure, but we're not owning anything like you were saying, Tom. But what's better yet is they are wanting owners to come in. They are wanting people to set up teams in cities, actual owners. So you will have a head figure to the team that is going to be liable for the financials of that team. That's so, really important, too, because a lot of esports uh, players are young. 
they don't have that experience and like in the rocket league scene for example the t like he said that the teams shuffle around all the time for various reasons it could be drama it could be that they're not playing well you know if they're having an actual team set up with somebody that can manage the financials and coaching and all that that you'll you'll see a lot better competition i think out of it Oh, I completely agree. And and we even saw some of that drama with the International this year for Dota 2, uh, which if you don't know, the International is right now the biggest esports thing championship tournament ever created ever in the history of all mankind. Um, TI is just fucking awesome. Hyperbole uh, but, much? <laughs> uh, you know, just saying. Um, so... Uh, Team Secret, one of the you know reigning champion teams, was formed with a bunch of other people, uh, you know, getting big heads and getting pissed off about their own current teams, and they come together to form a massive mega superstar team. It's the All Star team of Dota Two, and they go to the international, and then there are these other teams that work their way up from the ground floor. Uh, they're just groups of friends. They're not all stars. They don't have egos, and they've been playing together for a couple years, and. Team Secret gets their shit rocked in the first round of the main stage and gets knocked out of the tournament completely. No winnings, no nothing. It's amazing. Um, and the, the people who have been playing together, you know, march their way to the front door. And unfortunately, they lost. I was really rooting for them. Um, but it's, you know, we it's annoying to see that. Uh, it On one hand, it's great drama. It's great at the start but on the other hand i can't name the players on eg or secret or navi or og or any of the teams that i loved following this year because after the international everyone scattered it was like turning the lights on in a house full of roaches everything just starts moving you're like oh jesus i don't even want to be here right now uh, but if blizzard introduces some stability in this you know you might be able to follow a team for a whole year maybe more without the whole scene going to shit. And that's huge. I mean, look at the NFL. People who don't know football know Tom Brady is a patriot. I mean, that kind of stability is well-versed in other professional realms. It helps draw fans because even they can be more casual, but they know players on that team. They know how they react. They know that kind of stuff. They're more willing to root for a team that they know the setup for substantially more right. so and i how just, many people like the patriots because of tom brady yeah i'm exactly <laughs> and if he if he moved to another team how many fans would migrate to that other team there would <laughs> it'd be wholesale <laughs> it would be wholesale right. well not not to lie i mean he's a pretty boy so you're always going to have the woman well, factor to that <laughs> but so yeah i think this is actually a, a huge step forward for esports I think that they're going to – Dota helps set up getting prize money in. But the prize money dries up quick. This is helping set up an actual league where these players aren't getting the prize money. They're playing for contracts, which I think is a long-term solution that will stay. Because these owners are smart enough to be able to advertise. They're going to be smart enough to be able to actually negotiate with ESPN to try to maybe get some ESPN 2, 3, Ocho coverage, something like that which will help really grow the brands. I, I, do, I do think that there's room for both of these things to exist, even within not, not just you know eSports, but within the same game. So right now you've got, you know, on the far left, you've got Riot Games, and you can't hold anything using Riot Games or, or League of Legends without their express written permission. They get a cut of the money. They manage all the streams. They are in full micromanagement control. Uh, you've got the far right, which is Valve saying, I don't know, like get a big check, maybe some computers and cables and shit and like just fucking Dota, man, whatever. And then you've got Blizzard in the middle who, you know, there are third party Overwatch tournaments um, and Blizzard saying, yeah, we'll get into this and we'll do it officially. Now, what Valve can turn around and do with Dota is they say, yeah, I mean, I guess if you guys want to, you know, Dota for big checks and, you know, cardboard cutouts of, of dollar bills and stuff, you know, whatever, that's cool. Go throw your, your parties. But we're going to put on a league and, and we're going to we're going to put on the international and all of these, you know, quarterly tournaments that we've been doing. 
And I think both could exist because you've got now, you know, the amateur scene, not necessarily, you know, MLB AAA style, but you've got the amateur scene of people in their backyards then you know making impacts making news being awesome dota players and then you've got the pros and you'll see people graduate from the amateur leagues into the pro teams i think that sort of diversity will keep you know dota on the streets as well as in the stadiums as long as they can keep people interested yes yes fluid teams except for the diehards rex fan bases Oh, and I, I do have to say, uh, Blizzard is way, way, way better poised uh, to win this, to, to be successful with Overwatch in a pro league, than Valve ever will be, for one simple fact. Dota is a hard game to watch. You know, there's, there's magic going on, there's particle effects everywhere, stuff's exploding, there's towers, there's an announcer, there's people screaming everywhere, there's Chinese words being thrown around. You have no idea what anything means. <laughs> Someone screaming death ball at the top of their lungs over and over and over again, and all the fans are going nuts, and you're just like, why did that, like, hedgehog yeah. just kill the <laughs> fucking ghost pirate guy? What's a death and ball? Why, why is there a flying bat that's on fire? Is he in pain? <laughs> right, with, with Overwatch, it's very easy. It's like, oh, okay, the girl with the gun just shot the dude with the ball things, and then the dude with the ball things got killed by the gnome guy with the bigger gun. Got it. So the other people died, and these people didn't, so these people win. Overwatch right. is an easy game to understand. Dota is not. To so you can get casual people. Easy to understand, but Dota has one thing going for it. Overwatch doesn't. Dota is played from the bird's eye perspective, which is better for spectators. Overwatch is a first person game by nature. To actually see what's going on, you need to be first person. But for good perspective on everything that's happening from a spectator view, you need third person. But you still want to be able to see what's going on. So you're going to have this like picture in picture kind of thing to get best of both worlds. Which, I mean, Blizzard knows how to do production. If anyone's going to do it right, it's going to be them. But I think it, there is going to be some tricky production stuff that has to happen to make this look really well. I don't think that's going to be such a problem. Because in if you watch a Counter-Strike tournament, they do do a mix of first person sometimes and then third person other times. And, you know, expanded, drawn out map view at other times. Uh, and the, the production crews are getting really adept at being able to show the interesting parts of first-person shooters in a way that the audience can grep and get a, the maximum amount of information that they possibly can. Um, in Overwatch, you know, Counter-Strike, from a third-person perspective, it's not, it's not ugly, but it's kind of boring. Counter-Strike's a slow shooter. It's a methodical, planning, tactical sort of game. Um, Overwatch... Everything explodes all at once, and it's a lot of fun, and people are screaming at the end. It's great fun. <laughs> and I, I think it would be great to watch it from a third-person perspective. Um, we'll have to see what happens you know, when the games start, but right. I can't wait. I don't see production problems being anywhere near the list of things that could kill this. Now, does Overwatch have a good uh, spectate mode in-game now? Or is that I, something I don't know. they'll have to implement? I can see that. Even if they don't, though, I mean, Blizzard has the assets. They can, right. they can turn that thing out next week if they had to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But enough about BlitzCon. We'll, we'll find out more about the Overwatch League as it goes through and does its combines. We'll probably rehash that a little bit because it is interesting. But this month marks the 10th year anniversary to one of the better selling consoles of all time that I think marked the downfall of a franchise, the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> The bestseller that marked the downfall. Hey, oh, I'll, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll get into it, but yeah, yeah. 10 years ago to this month, I almost said today, the Wii was launched. It went on to sell over 100 million copies worldwide. In the era where the PS3 and Xbox 360 were being sold at a loss, this baby, every unit was profit. They sold these day one at a profit. This is the reason that Nintendo is able to have a four-year fa failure of the Wii U and still have plenty in the bank. <laughs> it's a, well, to be fair, it's not really hard to 
sell to repackage a GameCube in a slimmer package <laughs> and then sell that for twice the price and make a profit, right? The Wii was literally nothing special. It was literally a GameCube with a with a standard DVD drive and some waggle thrown on for good measure. <laughs> I'm not saying I didn't love the Wii. For the first three months I owned the Wii and I bought it at launch day, I waited in that line. Mm-hmm. I loved it. It was my favorite thing in the world. And then I realized the only thing you do is just waggle. <laughs> there were like six games that I really liked and they all came out at launch uh, with the exception of Mario Galaxy, which is still the best Mario game of all time. Um, but the Wii just lost steam. You know, the, the games that you thought were going to be great, like, did any of you guys play Red Steel? No. I avoided that atrocity, thank you. <laughs> However, I, um, uh, I bought made... into the hype. A, uh, I'm not a roommate, but a guy who lived next to me in college in the dorms will remain unnamed had one or had a copy and I got to at least see how bad that game was. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. So, so the, the game operates on this premise, right? You buy a Wii. You're like, Oh my God, that's amazing. You play Wii sports. And you're like, it's like, I, I can just control everything because Wii sports is a, a relatively simple game and B made by Nintendo. They spent a lot of time trying to tune those controls to get it perfect. And Wii Sports Mm -hmm. feels really good to play. So you've got Ubisoft, which A, they're Ubisoft. Um, (laughs) Hey now. B, (laughs) I I have it out for Ubisoft. Ever since they made me install Uplay to play Far Cry Blood Dragon, they have been on my shit list. Um, so, So you've got Ubisoft, right? And then you've got brand new Waggle hardware. And they make a game where you've got a sword in one hand and a gun in the other, which sounds like the most awesome game ever. You're a gun-wielding samurai, uh, you know, tearing through the streets of Tokyo to, I don't know, rescue a princess or something. The story is forgettable. The fact remains you have a gun and a sword that you can use. But, oh my god, those controls. It Nothing ever worked. You blocked when you shouldn't have blocked. You couldn't ever swing properly. The aiming was just like jerky and went everywhere it was terrible absolutely terrible and every other with a few 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 exceptions every other third party title to come out on the wii after its launch was absolute dog shit and continued on until the rest of its life third party was bad first party was some first party was pretty good exactly some of the most enjoyable games i've played for nintendo we're actually on that. Strikers? I was I about to mention that. <laughs> hours into Strikers. Striker was a lot of fun. Okay, could you imagine? Imagine a world, all right? Imagine the parallel universe that does exist where Nintendo was leading the online era for gaming consoles, and it's Strikers today instead of Rocket League that's getting all the <laughs> hype. Well, we I mean, could have been that pro team. If we were in the other universe, we could oh, have yeah. been the pro team. I'd watch the hell out of that. Would too. Well, I fucking love Strikers. If they would have had an online, a better online support with an actual friend system, not that friend code bullshit that they tried oh, to put on God. all of us. <laughs> but, I mean, they had great, great multiplayer games. I mean, the competitive side, you have your Smash Brothers, you have Strikers, you have Karts. On your fun side, you had the Mario Parties. I mean, actual online for that, real legitimate online, would have been great. Hell, the new, uh, what they call it, the uh, new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Yeah, I that, mean, was that was really a fun, fun. That was a fun game. If I could have just jumped in a lobby and played with some random people, that would have been a great time. Probably would have thrown mm-hmm. a Wiimote through a TV or two, but it would have been a great time. <laughs> it also, there was... Go ahead. If they could have focused more on, on the online multiplayer, that would be good. But they focused so much on it being like a party system. Have your friends over, everybody get together and play these somewhat casual games, but really fun games. Uh, yeah, I, really... I remember during during parties and when I would have people over, you know, we busted out the Wii and everyone loved the Wii. You get people together, yeah, get out the Wii. But if you're, you know, alone playing a game, I never get out the Wii. Right. It, there was just there was nothing left. And this is remember, this is in an era where games like, you know, Bioshock, Oblivion, 
ev literally everything on the PS3 in its first you know couple years. Uh, Mass Effect, these amazing, giant, gargantuan, beautiful games are coming out and blowing the lids off of everything. These are incredible games that no one will ever forget. One of the best generations in all of gaming. And you go, oh, I cannot wait to play Bioshock on my next-gen console, the Nintendo Wii. Yeah, <laughs> uh, look, Bobby, sit down. We have something to tell you. The Wii doesn't have games. <laughs> Nothing came out for the Wii. And the oh. things that got ported for the Wii, right? Do you remember Call of Duty 3? Do you remember oh. when Call of Duty 3 got ported to the Wii? Yeah, do you know who bought that? No one. My dad bought I it. Have, I have <laughs> never eaten something so fast in my entire goddamn life. But there there were some... I think it's labeled like second party, but I mean... Monster Hunter. It's an exclusive. Monster Hunter Tri was on the Wii. I will say that is one game I sat on my couch and played because it didn't have the gimmicky-ass controls and it was a good fucking game. Because one thing that people know how to do who strictly develop for Nintendo is to make really game or games look really, really good on really, really fucked up hardware. They had to do it for the 64. The GameCube was really strong, but it was still really fucked up architecture. And the Wii, underpowered as hell, but when devs only made for it, it looked good. It wasn't yeah. ultra realistic, but it was looking good. Yeah, and that's, that's how you create art, is you introduce limitations. If you want to see the most beautiful paintings in the world, you know, take an artist, take an amazing artist, cut off their limbs, and then throw them in a room with a paintbrush and a Nintendo GameCube in the corner, you will never see anything more beautiful in your entire life. I, a man I'm not, played I'm to not death all over a Nintendo Cube? <laughs> I, I'm not denying that the Wii, you know, didn't have good games. It had great games. The games that it had were amazing, but, you know, those... 10 to 20 games was it worth waiting in line yeah mario galaxy made it worth waiting in line but it's it's just it's barely past that passable point and you know i mean we could look at the wii u now right where they tried to to make lightning strike twice they even kept the name and it's that's just an abysmal failure there aren't enough games on it even you know Wind Waker in HD, which is you know basically someone said, hmm, how can we make a game that Tom will buy again from Nintendo? Let's re-release Wind Waker. Done. Hey, here's my wallet. But I've got to play it on a Wii U. No thanks. But I mean, there is one thing that the they did in the Wii that will trickle through and possibly help them in this generation. They had a big selling point that was bullshit to most consoles. And today, it's still bullshit to most consoles, is it's very low on power consumption. When I'm plugging a motherfucker into the wall, take as much power as you want. I just want to play a good game. But you move that technology forward. They had the Wii U. Okay, you have a game pad that you have to keep charged up, proprietary, because Nintendo wants your money. They love the peripherals. Um, but you put that forward into that same low power consumption technology into a tablet and you now have something that actually is a really good core function. So they may have actually stumbled upon something that could save their ass while damning their franchise with the Wii U because they don't do the Wii U without the gimmicky ass success of the Wii. They go back to conventional after they fall straight on their ass. And I, I really hope the Switch makes it. I, I think the, the concept is intriguing. Um, you know, if... I, I really... I hesitate because I've gotten burned so many times before. I really want to buy a Switch You're on buying one. it. You're going to be in the fucking <laughs> line at 2 a.m. You know the will. day before. We all know I, you will. I really want to, though. But I said to. that with the Wii U, right? I said, yeah. oh my god, it's another Nintendo console and they're going to have a Zelda game. Which, by the way, still hasn't come out but this isn't <laughs> oh, this really? isn't gimmicky gameplay though i mean right they, they have it's they not. have gimmicks but the gimmicks are not in the way you play the game they're where you play it but not how you play it it is and, always and, going to be typical controllers non-motion needed well, it, it really works to nintendo's strength because the one thing nintendo has never steered me wrong on with one small half exception uh is their their portable systems you know 
from every Game Boy I've owned to the Nintendo DS line, they've all been amazing. Yeah, the 3DS was really rocky in its first year, and yeah, uh, they made me overpay for that and then slash the price. Uh, but hey, I got some free Game Boy games that I already had out of it. Whatever. I bought a, ga- a, a console day one. I knew what I was getting into. I... I'm really conflicted. It's Nintendo on day one that might not ever get any games other than, you know, the few that it's coming out with. But it's Nintendo releasing a portable, which is going to be the best gaming experience you can have outside of the house. I so, don't know what to do. So my biggest thing is I don't have a tablet right now. If I have to pay $299, though I really think see them pinning $299, $250 price range. If I have to pay that to get a Switch, if it sucks ass, I overpaid for a okay tablet that has really really good first party games i yeah. guess that's that's not bad i mean if it's got you know a browser if i can you know sit there and maybe maybe they'll throw netflix on it right nintendo and netflix get along then i've got a kitchen tv if I they, guess that's not the worst thing if they no. have netflix hulu there's no reason not to buy one if it's less than three hundred dollars three hundred dollars and less right. you're not out anything yeah right? But the Wii, 10 years, it's made a huge, huge difference, a huge, huge impact. It has directly inspired motion control gaming, right? It directly inspired the Kinect, which was, it's actually the Kinect is freaking awesome technology, just not for anything gaming related. Um, It inspired the Move, which is trash, uh, which then got turned into the PSVR, which is getting mixed reviews. Um, but it did inspire, you know, Valve to go forth and say, "Yeah, let's let's give some people something to waggle while they're wearing a TV on their face," and those work really well. Um, but I, you know, we we can't understate the impact of Nintendo with the Wii now has enough money to be in the red for the next fifteen years without really being in trouble. So, salutes to you, Nintendo, for biting or just sucking everyone in to buying a fucking Wii that didn't even want one. Yep. My mom still has well one sitting under the TV. Well done, sir. I do have to say, one of the easiest hackable systems of all time, and it plays ROMs pretty well. Yeah. Yes. I love the Homebrew channel. So, Tom, the other day I was thinking, maybe I should buy me some No Man's Sky. I went on to Steam. I went through and looked at some of the screenshots. God damn, those screenshots look fucking good. You know that? I know, right? It's like someone went out and they rendered something instead of, oh. you know, taking a screenshot of real gameplay. But, right. I mean, they couldn't do that, right? Developers aren't dishonest, especially if Certainly. they're early access or on green light. There's no way. Certainly not. I mean, so I, I went forward and I bought the game. So, I mean, just, you know, I'm flying around space and guess what I never saw? any motherfucking dinosaurs okay i'm lying i did see like one sort of kind of thing like it but it had like weird ass wings on four legs and was like two inches off the ground so i mean it was like a <laughs> half mutated dragon without a neck i mean it was really Shittiest weird looking. jurassic park ever <laughs> but steam is now safeguarding us all steam is introducing the you have to i don't know i don't know how to explain it, but you have to have real game footage pictures in your art gallery for early access games. No more yes. pre-rendered bullshit. A, uh, a lot of developers will either pre-render something, but the more common is they'll have drawn artwork of their yeah. game. Be like, look, these are all of our look characters. concept art. Right. And, and Valve in their blog post even admits they're like, yeah, we kind of did, did that, that. With, with Dota 2. Because <laughs> Dota 2, the screenshots were, you know, the concept art of the heroes. Which, if you know what Dota is, is great. If you have no idea what Dota is, you're like, wow, What a beautiful that? art style. This could be cool. Oh, no. This isn't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? I basically installed the worst human simulator of all time. Everyone hates me and I can't get away. So I, I hate Dota so much. So I purchased... You guys um, want to play Dota later? <laughs> you would. No. So I purchased <laughs> me uh, No Man's Sky. I bought it. Um, I'm not as low on as everyone else. I will admit that there's some shady practice going on. It's still a decent game, but there was, there's no doubting there was some shady ass shit that happened. Adam, have you ever looked at anything and been like oh this looks good 
and then got under the hood and like, oh, fuck, I just got bamboozled? Uh, not in a long time. Um, not really that I can think of. I didn't buy into the No Man's Sky thing. Um, I'm one of those guys that waits until the game goes on sale after all the reviews are out and everybody's like, oh, this is such a great game, you have to play it. And I'm always like, oh, okay. Oh. Uh, in a little while. <laughs> so you like to wait for the reviews. I'm the slow poke of the thing. Like, what's up, guys? How about that Bioshock Infinite? <laughs> so you, so you <laughs> like to... <laughs> Bioshock Infinite was really good. It was. So you like to see reviews day one. Like, if you're going to buy a game day one, you like to be able to go <laughs> and actually see the reviews, right? Yes. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> hey, Tom, would you like to tell us about your favorite um, development company right now and what their um, nice shady practice is up to? Oh my fucking god! Bethesda. Okay. Bethesda, um, Bethesda, Bethesda. And you know, it, someone was gonna make the first jump. I did not expect it to be them. Honestly, I expected yeah. it to be EA. Yeah. So um, <laughs> world shocker there. Yeah. Ooh. For for the past year or so, um, there have been certain companies that had you know really big, hyped up, super market marketed titles you know tv ads magazine ads plastered everywhere uh, every time you turn on a youtube video you get an ad thrown in your face you watch on twitch there's banners and stuff everywhere you know they they spend all of the budget they have for the game on marketing and then they throw the developers like six bucks and say you can make a game on this right and the developers are like you want pong I'm like yeah i mean we've got fake screenshots and stuff so pong will work um but <laughs> Usually, the gaming public usually gets saved by the great, holy, ink-stained wretches that are the game reviewing, you know, people. Um, they'll get review copies. They can buy review copies if the company won't give it to them. And they say, hey, look, I'm a legit game person. I review games for this magazine, this popular website, uh, this podcast, this. Send us free games, please. <laughs> um but they'll review the games and they'll say, hey, guys, you know that Skyrim Super HD 2016 2K? Um, it's actually just Pong and all this other bullshit they're showing in screenshots. Yeah, that doesn't exist. Um, and then everyone's like, everyone's like, hold on, wait a minute. They're trying to scam us. And the reviewer's like, yes, yes, they're trying to scam you. Don't buy it. And the gaming public's like, wow, thank you, amazing reviewer. You totally saved my $60. But... <laughs> Last year, on several occasions, gaming companies said, ah, we don't really have review copies. Um, you can review it when it comes out, which basically says, go fuck yourselves to all the reviewers. It basically says, yeah, we know our game is dog shit, so we're not going to let you review it because we want to sucker the maximum amount of people possible. So Bethesda turns around and they say, yeah, um... We're not going to allow anyone to review our games or get review copies except for 24 hours before they come out. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, most, most Bethesda games tend to be a little longer than 24 hours. You know, most, most Bethesda games run in the range of 40 to 60 hours if you want to get, you know, a decent chunk of the content at the way. That's not, that's not counting everything. You know, you could put 100 hours into Skyrim at least, depending Just on how it. crazy you are. Yeah, 100 hours modding, modding 100 hours modding, 30 minutes of gameplay, and then another 10 hours of modding. Yeah, the last time I played Skyrim, <laughs> that's basically how it went. That's exactly I just what went, I did the last time. I went through a Steam Workshop, and I'm like, I need this and this and this. And then I'm like, ah, oh, cool, I've got 10 minutes to play before oh, bed. Look how much better fish. that grass looks now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, oh, look at that river now. That's, that's a much better water texture. Did that so, dragon just honk like a duck? <laughs> I actually, I love replacing the dragons with Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, and yeah. And the Macho Man one. Randy Savage one. Oh, yes. that's so good. But now reviewers will only have 24 hours to review a Bethesda game uh, before it comes out. Meaning they're not going to, you know, most reviewers aren't going to put on a review saying, uh, yeah, it's a Bethesda game and it's out now. Right, they want time to review. They have to uh, write. They have to write the review. They've got to, uh, you know, grab screenshots, video, cut their videos together. You know, whatever they have to do. There's a lot of time that goes into making game reviews. They're going to be scrambling, absolutely yes. scrambling. If and if they cool. even go for that at all, I know for you know, I, I want to say No Man's Sky did this. They put a uh, 
you know, a hold on reviews or review copies for a little bit. Um, well, shit, they the, were working on it. They pushed it back a week. Like they waited till the week of launch and pushed it a week. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the reviewers are like, yeah, we, we're not going to send out an incomplete review. So they issue the reviews after the game has come out. Meaning the right. game company can go, hey, we've got all this cool DLC. You should pre-order before it comes out. <laughs> then you can get all this cool stuff. You see, banning reviews is just a way to push pre-orders. It's just a way to fuck over the consumer. And yeah. I, Jesus fucking Christ, Bethesda. Seriously? It hurts the reviewers, too. Yeah. They've got this... two options. They've got rush the review out and try to get it in time where people are actually going to still pay attention and care about the reviews or wait until they can do a proper review and nobody cares about the reviews anymore for that game. Everybody's played it. Everybody's talked to their friends has played it. And that's, you know, those reviewers get ad revenues. And you're telling me you, know, you can't review Skyrim in 24 hours, Adam. I mean, come right. on, man. Up. They have to decide like, Hey, is it worth paying these people to review this game that they've only had for 24 hours or so not? IGN came out with a, uh, a counter article where they basically said, yeah, uh, go fuck yourselves in a really nice way to Bethesda. They said, look, it's not even about the money you're getting free games. We will pay you and we will pay you good money for advanced copies because that's what we do. We're a big company. We're, we are wearing our big boy pants and we can use money like adults to pay for goods and services. So we don't care about paying. Just give us fucking games so we can fucking review them for our fucking audience. Bethesda, so. I don't believe, is going to back down. Um, this is shady, but but fear not gaming public. There is one way you can review all of your great games before you pay hard-earned money to buy that piece of shit they're trying to swindle you with. Pirate the game, play it oh, for God. as long as you want, and then, if it's good, buy it later. I have done that on several occasions. And on several occasions, when I pirated the game and it ends up being dog shit, they don't see a dime. So, A, we do not publicly endorse. But yes, anyway, um, bring us demos, please. Um, the big <laughs> thing is that but rubbed me the wrong way. Bethesda has this huge stance. They're not going to send your big companies, your IGNs, your Bombcast, all, uh, GI, all those guys. They're not getting these copies anymore. However, Mr. Joe Schmo or people like us, you know, the little guys that don't have shit. All of a sudden, Bethesda contacts us. Hey, we're going to have an embargo on this, but here's this game. Play it. About a week before the game comes out, could you then review that for us? Hey, Tom, if Nintendo gave you... Oh, well, you're not a good person to ask. But generally, most people, <laughs> if they get a copy like that in advance, they're going to feel very warm about that company. If the game sucks, they're going to warm it up. They're going to make it not sound bad. They're going to make it sound pretty damn good, actually. So yeah. they get the next copy early because anyone gets a week early access on a game like that. That's going to give them great pub, great oh, yeah. pub. And the it doesn't even have to be early. It could just be for free. I well, mean, look at, look at the way steam yeah. has diverted their, you know, I paid for this and I got this for free. I unlocked this with a game key on reviews. They don't even show you the free reviews anymore by default. And, oh, I didn't know that. But yeah, it's, it's just bad and um skyrim that's what i was thinking about skyrim had an early reviewer on youtube so they're still sending out those games which counterdicts there we want everyone to have the same experience oh really <laughs> then why in the fuck are you giving the game to someone that you know is just going to be a yes man uh, yeah <laughs> and don't yeah, get me started on that prepackaged dlc bullshit tom we'll talk about that later because that I, I would like to to make a public service announcement um, if you are currently pre-ordering games or systems, don't. Uh, especially <laughs> if you are pre-ordering digital copies of games, don't. Right. Pre-orders, do pre-orders literally existed because games had like like comic books. They had print runs where they said, "Ah, we expect to sell X number. We're going to print X number." 
And if you were one of the people that wanted one of those copies, you said, yes, please, here's my money. I'm going to reserve my copy because there might not be another one later because the game might not sell well, it might not get good reviews, and they might not ever print another copy of that game again. I need to have mine. With digital, you just get it sent to you from the file server, right? The server just goes, oh, Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, we got one in. Yeah, yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Right? <laughs> it doesn't even have to print it. You don't have to do anything. The game just exists all of a sudden right. on your hard drive. It's great. Pre-ordering literally buys you nothing. And Except all the for some six skins and you get all like all the DLC exclusive weapons and armor Jesus. for 40 extra dollars. <laughs> you get the first season pass and you get the game four days early. Oh, and the jump and on they those can motherfuckers. Go fuck themselves. <laughs> all of that pre order mm. DLC is bullshit. And you know what? <laughs> Thanks to the way uh, Square Enix is. is you know, doing their DLC. I'm going to wait until the game of the year edition of, uh, of the new Deus Ex comes out at a deep, deep, deep steam discount. And I will give them like six bucks for it. Cause that's all they deserve. <laughs> that game's not Fucking making game of the year. That game is not making game of the year. Well, I... it, uh, no game makes game of the year. One game makes game of the year, but they come out with the game of the year edition because some backwoods reviewer somewhere <laughs> scrawled game of the year Deus Ex 7 on a piece of toilet paper and took a picture and tweeted it. Doom or Gears is going to walk away with it this year. Yeah. Uh, Bethesda title that caused them to do this because their beta for the multiplayer sucked ass and the reviewers told everyone about it. Or Gears, a company or microsoft who did the early access bullshit so yay game of the year going to one of the bad guys but speaking of game of the years we do have a few more candidates that will be coming out this month yes one of which i am actually super excited for and been waiting for quite a while I actually bought an old copy of an old game to play is pokemon sun and moon mm. finally coming out this month don't have the There's date always me, but... a lot of excitement when a new Pokemon games co- Pokemon game comes out. Yes, and Pokemon Go will be excited because their player base will see probably a five thousand percent increase for about oh, a month. Because yeah. they needed an increase in player base. Well, they they do. <laughs> People's man. grandmas they... are playing Pokemon Go. Oh, they're he- they're hemorrhaging <laughs> they right now though. Yeah, yeah they're that's true. They're not having fun, and you know they're definitely helping themselves by, by banning everyone with a custom ROM. <laughs> well, I can't blame that. That. that just yeah. go play the game normal, Tom. Quit being weird. Rooted. But you don't have to install Linux on everything. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> but some other notables we have um, today, actually, um, a game that I will look up, but I will never play, is Call of Duty: Infinite Warfare. Dropped today on all platforms that matter. Um, you also have the uh, PS4 Pro launching next week. Now that one baffles me because that should have came out before the VR. This console has got more balls to it. It's going to run better. It is probably going to be the system that if you're running PSVR, you're going to want this. So trade right. in your old, spend an extra $200 on top, and get the new shiny box that has a better processor, more RAM, and bigger hard drive. In other words, I'm, the PS I'm experience really is going to suck. I'm, I, going... I'm not going to get one. I'm really excited because I want to see the VR experience reviews on this by the people who buy it. Right. I will probably end up with one because it also adds native 4K. And while that's not the biggest thing in the world, that is actually really cool. And then I can also eventually dabble with the PSVR because I love, love the Vive. But I would like to see what the Sony devs can do with it because they know their shit. They're in the game industry very, very rooted in it. Any yeah, other- it'll, it'll be interesting. Any other games you guys are looking forward to? Oh, yeah. I'm going to pre-order this one because of the developer's wonderful practices. Dishonored 2. You guys pre-ordering that one, huh? I'm going to get the special $100. I'm going to pre-order it now, and then I'm going to read the reviews a week later after release. (laughs) I'm going to get that special deluxe edition that gives me all the DLC, the extra skins, gives me the game two days early. Hey, if we talk 20 extra dollars and your guy's invisible and you can just press A to win. Also, another but, uh, it actually might be good, though, because Dishonored was pretty cool. Dishonored, A lot of people like that game. I've never played one. 
I played a literally bit of one, it. I, but yeah. I had mixed feelings. Yeah. On on one hand, I be, mostly because of the art style, I expected you know cyberpunk Bioshock, but what I got was you know a, a simplistic stealth ish game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was I went into it with the wrong expectations. I need to come in, uh, come at that game again with a fresh mind because from what I've seen, it's a pretty cool game. It's a cool premise, but it wasn't what I was expecting, so I didn't really like it the first time I tried it. Also, um, there is a um, really, really, really big title coming out at the end of the month that I honestly have not heard a ton about right now, which surprises me given what it is. Uh, Final Fantasy Fifteen is actually due out November 29th. Road Trip Fantasy! <laughs> I'm actually... I'll probably pick it up. I haven't played... I, I haven't played one since um, I dabbled with 10. Yeah. Same. Well, I, I haven't played 10. one since 10. I did some at 12. Remember. I hated the new Combat Sound 12, but... Just don't. Save, save yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, Final Fantasy 13. Because this is a 72-pin connector, and we tangent. Final Fantasy 13, <laughs> or as I like to call it, Angst Corridor 13, is possibly <laughs> not even one of the worst Final Fantasy games, but one of the worst games I have played in a very long time. Really? It is, it is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Uh, it is... The soundtrack is amazing. They've outdone themselves again. Uh, the combat system, it's a JRPG with some uh, extra stuff thrown in. It's all right. But, oh, I hate literally every single character. Every single character's voice is annoying. They're well-voice acted, but they are voice acted very annoyingly. Um, <laughs> everyone is either pissed or crying or a combination of the two <laughs> at all times drama and, though oh no it's not even good drama it's not like it's not like i'm watching you know a superhero show on the cw fuck you arrow um <laughs> where the, the drama is such that you know it's shitty i know it's shitty i'm not actually enjoying it but i have to find out what happens next i just don't care enough i've been halfway through the game for three months and i just haven't picked it back up again it's and you know how in Final Fantasy seven you had you know big areas to explore and you can run around all the place. No. Final Fantasy thirteen, you have a corridor and you walk down the corridor and you'll attack a guy and you'll walk down the corridor and oh no, something jumped out and it attacks you. And then you walk down the corridor but wait, it splits. Oh my god, what happens at the split? The split goes for a little bit, you get an item, and then it continues on and you might bypass an enemy here. But it's still locked in that same corridor. It is honestly one of the worst RPGs I've ever played. And I am not giving Square Enix a goddamn dime until I'm guaranteed that 15 is going to be less shit. What about for the 7 remake? No. No. From what I've heard, it's going to be episodic. I know Square Enix isn't going to re release Final Fantasy 7 the way they should. Um, if Square Enix doesn't release Final Fantasy 7 where I can take Barrett on a date, I'm not buying it, right? Final <laughs> Fantasy VII was a goofy fucking ass game. There's a lot of shit in there that they pulled that they absolutely couldn't do today because people would throw a hissy fit, right? Cross-dressing and then tricking a mob boss to try to sleep with you so you can threaten him and, and steal you know, people back, yeah, that's never going to happen in this game. I, I really want it to be good. I love Final Fantasy VII as much as anyone else, but... It's square. It's just square. <laughs> Maybe they'll redeem themselves. We can only hope. I hope so. I really do. All right. So do you guys want to hear a gaming fact? Yes. Yes, yeah. we do. This what one we comes got? from Did You Know Gaming. These guys are great. Donkey Kong was originally set to be a Popeye arcade game. Mario was Popeye. Pauline was Olive Oil. And DK was Bluto. Nintendo lost the license to the game, but Miyamoto did not want to drop the project, so he filled in the blanks with his own characters. And now we have Donkey Kong. And That's fantastic. Then, because of that, we have Mario. Yeah, just think, we could have had, instead of barrels, it could have been cans of spinach. 
And if yeah. you actually land on one right, it squirts out, makes you big, and you start kicking them out of the way or some shit. Yeah. And, and think, if if Square wouldn't have made that their last swan song of a game, Final Fantasy, if it wasn't such a massive God success, I wouldn't have had to suffer through 25 <laughs> hours of Final Fantasy XIII. Okay, and with Should this rant continuing for the rest of the <laughs> night, uh, that's all we have for you this week. Uh, come back next week, same time, new topic, same crew. So, for 72PC, we're out. See ya.